All right, so today we're gonna be talking about my current favorite products. I didn't wanna do a March Raves and Rejects because one, I haven't done a Raves and Rejects video in a few months, so it would be like months worth of Raves and Rejects combined, and I also have so many horrible products to tell you guys about right now so that I figured I would do a whole other like product fails video because I have been testing out so many products the last few months because it was 15 days of foundation and then all of my videos were pre-recorded so I feel like I haven't done like a real-time update for you guys so if you're excited for this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you're new here you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe I upload every Monday Wednesday Friday 6 p.m. Pacific time I've also been doing lots of bonus vlogs so I'll be leaving my vlog playlist down below if you missed any but if you're not a vlog person just try one try one and if you want to know uh how I make my matcha lattes here you can check out the vlog pretty bad self tanner hands right now we can ignore that. I haven't washed off the color guard yet. Also, for those of you who aren't following already, I have been doing a few giveaways on Instagram, so if you want to go check those out and enter, you can head over to my Instagram. I'll pop it in right here. It's the same exact thing as my YouTube. All right, I have a whole giant bin of goodies here to talk to you about. I'm wearing a lot of them on my face today, like I usually like to do in these videos, so you can kind of see how they look. Obviously, my skin tone is uh, quite different today than it is normally, so some of the products are going to look a little bit different, but I've worn all of these in a video at some point. So if you wanna just search the Taylor and the name of the product, the video that I'm wearing it in will pop up. Let's start out with a face mask, but what? Is it gonna be one of those days? I think so. That has been incredible for my skin. This is the Summer Fridays Overtime Mask. I wasn't a fan of the jet lag mask at all. I feel like it didn't do anything for my skin, but this one, I actually noticed a difference with. This isn't like a leave on for hours type of mask. I almost use it more as like an exfoliant. It basically smells like a pumpkin spice latte, like to a tea. Smells very fall like, and it has these little like exfoliating beads in there. And the way that I use this is I massage it onto dry skin and you can kind of like feel the beads getting off some of the dead skin. I leave it on for about, I don't know, anywhere from like, 10 minutes sometimes to an hour if I'm like doing other stuff and then I just wash it off in the shower. I really like using it in the morning because I feel like when I get out of the shower it just makes my skin look so radiant and soft and I get an exfoliation and gets off any of like the dead skin without making my skin look super dry and peely. I still feel like my skin is like moisturized and plumped afterwards and I do feel like it does make my skin look glowier and brighter. So I like using this about one to two times a week. I have a couple skincare other skincare products here by Paula's Choice. I am so happy they rebranded and came out with like the new packaging and logo and everything. I think it looks so much more like hip and with the times. They're like one of the cool kids now, you know. I love their packaging now. But Paula's Choice, you guys know, I've used for years, like this product especially. And this has just been inching its way back into my routine. This is a 2% BHA liquid exfoliant with salicylic acid. I use this at night or in the morning, usually in the morning because I feel like my nighttime kind of like peel or exfoliating is my retinol. I've talked about this specific product on my channel years ago and it's one of those products that every time I use it, I forget why I stopped using it because I do notice a difference with my skin. It's basically like a liquid BHA, so I just put it on a cotton pad and run it over my skin. You might get some peeling with it or like stinging and stuff when you first start using it, but then your skin gets kind of used to it. I don't use it every single day. I probably use it about three to four times a week because with my skincare, I just do whatever I feel like my skin needs that day. So if it's like super dry, I'm not going to put on a BHA or a retinol. I'm going to use like my rosehip oil and a super, you know, intense moisturizer. My rosehip oil I use every single night. So that never changes, but that's like the one constant thing. So this, if you feel like your skin just looks really dull and you need like that brightening and you want a mild exfoliant, the Paula's Choice one is awesome. So this moisturizer, I don't think is going to be for everybody. So before you purchase this, listen up to see if this is something you might like, but this is their new Essential Glow Moisturizer with SPF 30. I'm still using my Holy Grail La Roche-Posay. I'll leave that exact one down below, but I've been using this one about half the time when I know that I'm using a certain type of foundation that day. So this one is definitely a bit thicker. It does have a white cast to it when you first put it on, so I wouldn't wear it on days where you're not gonna be wearing a foundation over it because your skin does look like pretty white when you first put it on. But the thing that I really like about this one is that if you're someone who likes a tackier kind of base underneath makeup, this one sets down super nicely and I feel like creates a really nice like tackier kind of base if you're someone who likes that. If you like a super soft base, then go with the La Roche-Posay one. But if I know I'm gonna be using 
a certain type of foundation that I just feel like will work better with this type of base. I'll go in with this moisturizer and it does set down super nicely. It doesn't break me out. I feel like there's something in this that my skin just really likes. Even though it sets down, it still has a really pretty glow to it. So if you like matte skin, this one isn't going to be for you. This is like for the glowy skin kind of gals. By the way, Paul's Choice is like known for their ingredients. They're a total skincare brand. So I just trust their ingredients 100%. I guess we'll just kind of go in order here. I'm like starting with the full face. So next up is the NYX Angel Veil Skin Perfecting Primer. I've been testing this out for, I wanna say at least three months now, probably like three or four months. This primer is one of those rare primers that I do feel like I can see a difference with. Do I like it better than my Revlon, where are you? Wow, I didn't have to look. Revlon Pore Reducing Primer. This one I'll use specifically for my pore area. I don't put this all over my face. This one I feel like I can use all over my face. So I do feel like I would use these for different kinds of things but this one does have that like soft focus a bit blurring kind of finish to it but it does mattify your face because of that so just keep that in mind if you're someone who likes like the super glowy skin you might want to put this on first and then spray like a glowy setting spray or something but I do feel like this helps create just that soft focus like filled in kind of look before you put on your foundation. As far as drugstore, kind of like pore filling, smoothing primers, these two are my go-tos. Make sure you get the pink one if you're gonna try the Revlon one, the white one is totally different. Current favorite foundation, I'm not gonna say a whole lot about because I talked all about it during 15 days of foundation and during the wrap up video. L'Oreal Freshwear Foundation, so freaking pretty. I'm not wearing it right now because since I had the self tanner on, I needed to like majorly darken my face. So I used the Pacifica Alight Foundation in the shade 23NM and I mixed it with the Vanish in porcelain just to like lighten it up a little bit. This one just stays put on my skin. It looks beautiful. It looks like a little bit softening, gives really great coverage. It doesn't crease horribly on me. It's just like one of those foundations that all around is an A+. And I realized they actually have shades in between the two that I have. So I am gonna be picking up the shade, I think either 405 or 410. I do feel like this is one of those foundations that could probably work for all skin types. It doesn't like pick up the dryness if you have dry skin it's from the drugstore. Loving this foundation right now. Actually, we're gonna switch up the order now. I'm just gonna go in with random. So I've been testing out tons of different eyeshadow palettes lately and the standout one for me has been this Ace Beauty Classical Paradise palette. It's what I'm wearing on my eyes right now. I love that you have a few more neutral shades in here, but then you also have these really fun pops of color like the green, the yellow. I obviously have the yellow on my inner corner right now. I have this pink shade on my lower lash line and this shade right here, so pretty. This would be like the perfect wedding makeup kind of eyeshadow. It has that really pretty soft like pearly look to it. The matte shades in here have great pigmentation but they don't blend away when you go to blend them out. They're easy to blend. They feel nice and soft but not like too powdery. I'm 99% sure I picked this up on Hot Look, which is Nordstrom Rack's flash sale site. So link Hot Look down below, but I think you can also just still get it on their website for full price, but I'm pretty sure I got this for like a really good deal on Hot Look. So just love the packaging, so pretty. Ace Beauty is more of like an indie brand. I still don't know if it's Ace Beauty or Ace Butte, Ace Beauté. Who knows? So this blush is so interesting because this is the Buxom Seychelles Seychelles Primer Infused Blush. This I started wearing and I wore it a few times and I was, it almost has that like MAC blush reaction for me where I'm like, I don't know what the heck it is about this formula and this color, but it just looks stunning. I feel like I like a lot of blushes, but to find that one shade where it's just like, oh damn, this is a gorgeous blush is pretty rare. And I started wearing this and I felt like that. And then I started hearing a ton of people talk about this in pop-ups. So I do feel like this is one of those blush shades and formulas that just works for a lot of people. I don't have it on right now. I should have put it on. I have the other palette that I'm about to talk about on, but it is more pigmented and like more colorful than what I usually go for, but it still works on my skin tone and looks beautiful. I really like wearing this if I only have on like mascara and kind of more like subtle eyes because of that. If I just want like my focus to be the face and the cheeks and everything, this is a really pretty blush. I feel like it can look a little bit overpowering if you have on a ton of other makeup. So you can just always tone down your blushes by using like a powder brush and just tap over it with a bit. All right, so the blush and highlight and bronzer that I have on today is all from the Becca Chloe Malika palette. I have all three on right now. Obviously it's gonna look a little bit different on my skin tone right now than it normally does, but I mixed the blush shades I have on the highlight and the bronzer. And if you haven't liked 
Becca f powder formulas in the past, which I haven't been like the biggest fan. I just find them to be a little bit powdery and I don't feel like they stay on my face. This formula is totally different. This one still has that really nice blend, but it's not super powdery. It's a lot more of a stiff formula and I just find it to actually like last on my face throughout the day. So in my opinion, whatever they did with this formula, they should just keep and start using for the rest of their blush bronzers and highlights because the formula just lasts so much better. Next up is a brow gel that I'm wearing right now. It's the Sigma Tint and Tame Brow Gel in the shade Dark. My like holy grail brow gel is the Milk Makeup Kush Brow Gel. That one gives so much color to your brows. Love the shade of it. Doesn't leave it like crunchy or anything. This one is a close second. I've been reaching for this pretty much most days like over the Milk one lately. The only thing I don't like about it is that it does leave that like a little bit crunchy kind of feel. Like I feel like I can feel this one on my, that was a lot of feels. I can feel this one on my eyebrows more than I can the milk one. So if you don't like that, then I would say go for the milk one. But it has a nice little wand to it. It adds a ton of color. I basically just go in with this first and then just use a brow pencil to like shape it out on the edges. But I get most of the color from my brows from this. It lasts all day. It doesn't transfer anything because it does fully like dry down. Also side note, Sigma is on Ebates. So if you shop with Ebates, you can get cash back on Sigma's website through Ebates. So that's super exciting. Next up, I have a hair oil here. This is the Brio Geo Farewell Frizz. This has rosehip oil, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of. Rosehip oil, argan oil, and coconut oil blend. This smells so freaking good. Oh my God, it smells heavenly. I have the NBR extensions right now. I did a whole video on it if you wanna see the process of that and everything, but it's super important to keep your extensions, with, whether you have tapins or any other kind of extensions, you have to keep them super moisturized because they can dry out and just get like not as nice feeling. So whenever I have extensions in and on my real hair, I always use some type of oil. And I like using this when I have damp hair. You can't really feel it going on your damp hair, so you can go overboard. So I would just say don't put over like a pump for your whole head. I mean, I have a lot of hair, so it depends on how much hair and how long it is and everything, but it can look too oily if you put too much in, so just be aware of that. But it smells amazing. The smell like stays in your hair, and I do feel like it does help with keeping my hair frizz at ease. I have really frizzy hair, especially in the past like year for some reason, I feel like it's gotten frizzier. You can see like some flyaways at the top and stuff, but I do feel like this really helps to tame it and just keep everything like down and smooth. I also will use just the tiniest amount of this. Well, we can just do it now. I haven't put any in today. So I just use like the tiniest amount, like that much and run it between my fingers and then put it on the ends of my hair on dry hair. And it also helps to kind of like help with the split end situation on the ends of your hair. I did mention a while ago that I was doing the how I grew out my hair video. A few of you guys have asked where that video is. I filmed it and the footage turned out horrible. I was like sitting in my living room and it was blurry half the time. So I just dumped that footage. So I am gonna refilm it, but I feel like it's just weird to do when I have like extensions in my hair. So once I take out my extensions for summer, which will probably be I don't know, in like June or, actually I might even do it before then. I'm going to Hawaii in May. I didn't really think this through. I don't know. Whenever I take out my extensions, I'll do that video because my real hair has grown a ton. Let me find a piece. So here is my real hair. Like my real hair is pretty long now, but yeah, I don't know. I just feel like that's a weird video to make when you have like hair extensions in. I have found so many good nude lip combos lately. So I think I want to do a whole other video on that. Let me know if you guys would want to see that video. But the one I'm wearing right now is the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink in the shade 55 Driver. Nude lipsticks look different depending on your skin tone. So again, it's gonna look different on the self tanner. It's just a very nice neutral medium kind of nude that has a little bit of more orange in it, I would say, rather than like pink. The formula of the Maybelline Superstays has just totally grown on me in the last probably like four months. These are bomb. These stay put throughout the day. The only downside to this is that it's slightly tacky. Like when you press your lips together, you can kind of feel it but it does not transfer. These are kiss proof, food proof, everything proof. They stay on and the dark shades. So if you've never tried this formula, even if you're not into this shade, try out this formula. It's amazing. Definitely my favorite lip liner lately has been the Collab Liner and See Through. This is just like a perfect everyday shade that can go with pretty much any nude lipstick I put on. I only use lip liners if I'm using a lipstick lipstick, not like a liquid lipstick, unless I need to like deepen up or add some definition or something. This one is from Sally Beauty. I think it's around like 
six bucks, something around there, so it's affordable, and it is beautiful, and it goes with literally everything. This one I discovered in my TJ Maxx video I did, where I tested out a bunch of TJ Maxx makeup that I bought online, TJ Maxx. This is NARS Bella Du Jour. This one isn't, like, super long-lasting on me. It's more of just a lipstick, not, like, a long-lasting food proof lipstick or anything, but this one is beautiful for layering. I have a little bit on right now actually over the Maybelline. I can add a little bit more. It's matte. It's like a matte crayon. Beautiful for just like popping in the middle if you want to make your lips look a little bit bigger or for using all over. It is more of like a light nude shade. So I will use this one with the collab liner and see through or layer it on pretty much any other like nude liquid lipstick or whatever just to lighten it up. And then this one is so freaking pretty if you like the dead nude or if you need a layering one to lighten other nude lipsticks up and this one has more of like a pink tone to it than an orange tone this is the wet n wild liquid catsuit in the shade caught you bare naked they say this is a high shine lipstick i would just call this like a pigmented gloss that's the way that i use it and i don't usually like glossy pigmented things because then they just transfer all over the place but this one I like for some reason. It just lightens up any color. I'm gonna swatch these, but they're gonna look totally different than they normally do. Maybelline one is on my lips, so I didn't swatch that. Here's the liner, here's the NARS one, and then here's the Wet n Wild little lip gloss thing. So these four have been like my go-tos. I'll mix them together, I'll wear them on their own. These are just like the four that I can always go to if I just want that super nice light kind of nude lip. Eyeshadow palette that I've been reaching for on an everyday basis when I'm not filming or doing anything like where I want bright intense eyeshadow is the Maybelline City Mini palette in the shade Brooklyn Nudes. This just has like all of the basic matte nude shades I could want in life. We have this really pretty cool toned one which is the one I usually put into my crease. I'll put a combo of these two or just this one all over my lid and if I want to do something smoky or warmer I'll use these shades up here but usually I just go in with like these three and these are very soft. They are more powdery because of how freaking tiny and cute this is. It just fits in my like overnight bag really easy or travel bag. All right we're almost getting down to the bottom. Like I said, this is like my favorites from the last few months, which is why there are so many. I don't throw just any products into my favorites videos. These are ones that are like tested, used a shit ton, love. So this is the Maybelline Silky Matte Sunlight Bronzer in 01. The formula of this is very odd. Like it feels dry when you put your brush in. It doesn't feel like you're picking up any product, but then you put it on your face and there's definitely product there. So my favorite brush to apply this with is the Flower Beauty bronzer brush here. I think it's actually called the contour brush. I'll link both these down below. But this shade is just gorgeous. It still looks warm, but it doesn't look too orangey. It's a little bit deeper than the bronzer in that Becca palette that I showed you, but I just love this for literally any look, any any day. It just works. Just looks really flattering and if you're in the market for a drugstore bronzer, this one is gorgeous. A bronzer that is not drugstore but also super pretty is the Pure Bronzing Act Matte Bronzer Light. I think they have two or three different shades of this. It smells like chocolate. It smells like the Too Faced palettes, like to a T. This one is definitely more of a soft kind of velvety formula than the Milani one. This one's definitely more stiff. So if you like a softer one that just blends out super easily, this one is so pretty. There's something about the formula of this that just feels so nice going on your skin. It's like, it's like a pleasurable bronzer experience, you know? And then you got like the whiff of chocolate as you're putting it on your face. I wore both of these a ton in 15 Days of Foundation. Also something that I wore a ton during 15 Days of Foundation and that I've been reaching for a ton on a daily basis is the Flower Beauty Shimmer and Strobe Highlighting Palette in SP1. The packaging drives me a little crazy. Like, no one actually uses the brushes that come in these things, so I wish brands would just stop putting them in. The palette would be so nice and tiny if it just stopped here, and then you wouldn't have this ugly thing. But anyways, packaging aside, the highlights in here, I use obviously these two. This one is too dark for my skin tone, but this one is pretty as eyeshadow. These are so soft, but still super intense. Look at that. So pretty as eyeshadow too. I'll wear these on the inner corner of my eyes or all over the lid. It gives you that like beaming kind of highlight, but it doesn't emphasize texture. Just watch it for you guys since it's already on my hand. All right, we finally have the last product here, which is also a hair product. This is by IGK and it's the Speechless Dry Oil Finishing Spray. I just noticed it said for hair and body, I guess because it's like 
an oil. I've never tried this on my body. I purposely didn't put any product in my hair today so that I can show you guys how this looks, but this is basically a super lightweight dry oil finishing spray that just gives your hair so much shine. You only need a little bit of this, and again, it smells amazing. It smells like coconut. I'm not wearing a bra right now, so I can't like fully stand up. I just realized that. Um, We are gonna go like this. So when I use this, I don't use a ton because you only need like a spritz to make your hair look super shiny and healthy. I especially like using it up on the top on my real hair because that's where it can look like a little bit drier. I hope it's gonna pick up on camera, but oh my God, it smells so good. It just gives your hair like the prettiest, healthy looking shine. And it's also good for your hair because it has coconut oil in it. It has avocado oil, sesame oil, camellia, citrus. There's tons of different oils in here, so I feel like it's actually doing something for my hair. Not just making it look shiny, but like actually making it a little bit healthier, you know? So it just really helps to make my hair look more like fresh and shiny and healthy. And it also does, I feel like, tame down some of the frizz a little bit too. That was everything that I've been super into lately. Again, everything will be linked down below. I do have a whole Raisin Rejects playlist, so if you want to see what my past month's favorites have been, I'll link that down below too. And my product fails video will be coming. I literally have like a bin full of products that I've been trying that are just major thumbs down for me. So if I included that in this video, this video would be like an hour long. Oh, also don't forget if you're in the Pittsburgh area, I am doing a meetup in Pittsburgh Saturday, April 13th, one o'clock to three o'clock. I'll have all the meetup info down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.